What is up guys? We are back with another BIOS video. And today we're gonna to be checking out the BIOS here on Gigabyte's Z590 Vision G. Now the Vision series of motherboards from Gigabyte are really geared towards content creators, digital artists, and things like that. And they've made their boards white and they've made the BIOS white. So you can see that we have this really white design BIOS. This is just the skin of Gigabyte's normal BIOS. So, you know, while this is for the Z590 Vision G, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of Gigabyte's Z590 motherboards. So we've set everything back to its default. So this is how you should see the BIOS if you're loading it into it for the first time. Now, if you wanna know how to get into this BIOS, how do I get to this screen? When you turn your computer on for the first time, keep on hitting the delete button, not the backspace, the delete button on your keyboard. Just keep on hitting it and you'll be loaded here into the BIOS. And when you get loaded into the BIOS here, you'll be on the easy mode or the shortcut screen as I, as I like to call it. Um, so when you load in here, you do have full control with your keyboard and your mouse, as you can see. Here we have information on our board, the BIOS version that we're running, information on our CPU and our memory. Over here, we have a live view of our CPU frequency, CPU temperature, CPU voltage, and PCH or chipset temperature. Below that, we have our memory frequency, system temperature, memory voltage, and our VRM temperature. Below that, we have our DRAM status. It shows that we have two sticks of G-Skill memory installed. They're each eight gigabytes. Over here, kind of gives you a view of what you have installed in your system. So on our SATA ports, um, port zero, we have our Samsung SSD 870, um, 500 gigabyte uh, solid state drive. PCIe, we just have our one graphics card and we can see it's running um, at PCI Express 4.0 at X16 speeds. M.2, we don't have any M.2 drives installed, but if we did, there are four M.2 slots on this board and whichever, you know, drive you have installed will correspond with where you have it installed right here. So this is really good to see if you're like having trouble with like a graphics card or a drive or something, you can see if it's being detected in the BIOS and that's kind of where you start your troubleshooting. So it's good that you kind of have that here. Below that we have this XMP. So XMP profile, most memory kits that you're buying these days should have an XMP profile. And that's one of the first things you wanna do when you turn your system on for the first time is enable that XMP profile. Most motherboards that I've experienced, XMP profile will not be on by default. So you just simply click it and it enables our XMP profile running our memory at 3600 megahertz. Again, turn it off, turn it on, that simple. Boot sequence right here. Now we only have one drive installed, but if we had multiple drives, we could easily drag and drop them right here to set our boot sequence. Moving over here to Smart Fan 6. This shows you the fan speeds of all the fans you have connected to your motherboard. We only have our CPU fan, so you can see the live fan speed here. You can also click into this and it brings up this nice interface that allows you to tune all of your fans, allows you to set the fan curves and everything like that for all of the fan headers that are on the board, just makes it really easy. So you don't have to download software later in Windows to do this, you can do it all in the BIOS very easily. To get out of this screen, you just go to uh, this back right here or you just hit escape on your keyboard. Over here, we have Intel Rapid Storage Technology. If you wanna turn that on or off, you just click right here. We can change the language. We can bring up the help screen um, by clicking here or hitting F1, but it just basically gives you all of your keyboard shortcuts um right here which will you know show you different things or how to you know uh you know f10 is save and exit f11 go to favorites all of that advanced mode is f2 we will be going into there in just a second smart fan 6 we were just in there but you can hit that hit uh f6 anytime and it will go into that load optimized defaults it will load the bios defaults um you can hit f7 anytime you're in the bios to load those defaults q flash this allows you to easily flash your BIOS. So if you are going to be updating your BIOS, which I would suggest, this is, makes it very easy to do. Also, Gigabyte does offer a way to do it via Windows um, with their app BIOS software. Again, that works just as easy as well. Save and exit, and then our favorites menu. So our favorites menu is in the advanced mode. Um, there, 
We had favorites here and now they're not there anymore because we just updated our BIOS. But this is just a menu that allows you to put different settings in here um, that may be on different pages that you can all find in one very easy, you know, one very easy section right here. We can hit escape and go back and then we'll go to advanced mode, which would be F2. And when you go into the advanced mode, it's going to drop you into the tweaker section. In the tweaker section is all of your settings, everything that you're gonna to need to change to overclock, everything that you're going to need to really tune your system. CPU upgrade, I would just leave it at default. Um, it is like obviously set to default, but you have a gaming profile and an advanced profile. Again, I would just leave it at default. CPU base clock, that's your BCLK. Typically, it should always be set at 100. Um, enhanced multi-core performance, set to auto. CPU clock ratio. Now, if you wanna set your base clock to something higher, if you wanna do a quick all core overclock, this is how you would do it. I'll show you another way to overclock as well, but you can just change this. You just hit enter or click on it and then set whatever you would want. So it's at 35 or 3.5 gigahertz, but we can set this to something higher like 45 or 4.5 or five gigahertz. Whatever you wanna do, you can go ahead and set it. Um, very easy to do right there. We have a ring ratio, IGP ratio, under advanced CPU settings. Um, this is where you can change a few things. Now on this board specifically, I would change your CPU over temperature protection. For, if you have it set to auto, it's set to a lower value than the TJ Maxx, which is 115 degrees. Um, we ran into thermal throttling problems when we went to overclock on this board. I don't know if it's set to like 90 degrees or 100 degrees, I'm not sure, but you definitely wanna change this. And it's really nice. I've seen so many boards that don't actually list the temperature values, they list a weird value, then you have to do some math. Here, you could just set it to the TJ Maxx, which would be 115 degrees, oops, there it is. And you know, you just set that. Hyper threading, you can turn on or off. Um, Intel speed shift, CPU thermal monitor, all of that stuff. Turbo boost, turbo boost 3.0. Um, and then here is active turbo ratio. So this is another way you can overclock. You change this from auto to manual and you can see your turbo ratios. So by default, two cores on this processor will boost to 5.3 gigahertz under the right settings and two more cores will be 5.1 gigahertz. Then two would be 4.9 and then two would be 4.8. Now, if you, again, you wanted to, to do an all core overclock, but you don't want it to, that to be your base clock, you can actually change these to, you know, maybe you want to do an all core overclock of, oops, not, not 127. Uh, we want to do an all core overclock of five gigahertz. We would change each of these values right here to 50. And then when our CPU boosts, it will boost up to five gigahertz on all cores. So you would change all of these if you wanted to. By default, again, this is set to auto. And you can, of course, change all of these settings in Intel's extreme tuning utility as well. Um, per core, hyper threading disabled. C states, if you wanna set up all your C states, you can do it here. Turbo power limits, turbo per core limit control. Again, you can change this as well. Um, and that is everything in the advanced CPU settings. Your XMP profile stuff is here as well. So again, by default, it's disabled. If you wanna enable it, you just do that there. If you didn't do it in the easy mode, if you wanted to overclock your memory, so our memory set at 3,600 megahertz, if we wanted to overclock it past 3600 megahertz, we just go into this menu and set it to what we want. So if we wanted to go a little bit higher, um, maybe 30, what, what can we go past 36, 3700 megahertz or 3800 megahertz, you would just change it right there and then save it and see if your overclock would work. We'll set that back here. If we disable, uh, uh, we'll set it back. So we'll have to put this back to, oops, one more way to 3600 megahertz here um and then advanced memory settings again this is everything to do with your memory one thing a lot of people want to do is change their timing so they want to tighten or loosen their timings maybe for an overclock you can do all that here you can see all of your timings right here as well um, so you can change all that in here you also have your spd info or your memory info you can see what's installed all of the all of the information on your memory that is installed go out of there and then we have all of our voltages now if you are overclocking i would really suggest that you change your vcore voltage mode from auto 
to either you know adaptive override or fixed core i like to do fixed core because i like to control my v core that is the voltage that's being sent to the cpu and we set our cpu v core typically you start at 1.3 uh oops let's go to 1.3 oops i'm going the wrong way um for some reason it's oh this is 1.1 <laughs> All right, let's go to 1.3. We start at 1.3 volts and then we go from there. The reason I say that is because if you overclock, the if you have everything set on auto, it's gonna throw a lot more voltage at the CPU than, than that is needed. And then you will, you'll run into temperature issues. You'll run into just the CPU getting hotter than what it needs to. For example, we overclocked our um, i9-11900K to I believe 5.1 gigahertz or five gigahertz. And if when we left this on auto, it was well over 100 degrees. But when we set our set B core, I think we had it at 1.35 volts. You know, we were around 85 to 90 degrees. So it definitely helps you when it comes to overclocking. So I would definitely set that. But all of your voltage stuff is right here. And then you have your advanced voltage settings. Again, you can change your advanced voltage setting, settings. And then for people looking for load line calibration, it's right here in CPU VRM settings. You can set your load line, load line calibration on all of that if you wanted to. And it shows you the scaling right here so you can see the different you know, load line calibrations. Again, if you're not overclocking, just leave this on auto. And that is it for the tweaker section. Again, it gives you everything that you need to overclock your CPU, to change different CPU settings, to overclock your memory, to change your memory timings, all of that, and all of your voltages are right here in the tweaker menu. Now we go to settings, platform power. This has everything to do you know, with powering on your system, power on by keyboard, power on by mouse, resume by alarm. Um, everything to do with power is right here. Oops, I keep on hitting escape. Um, IO ports, again, this allows you to turn, you know, turn on or off the internal graphics, to turn on the audio controller. We have super IO configuration. We have USB configuration. Again, everything is enabled by default here. Network stack configuration. We don't have our network, con you know, plugged in right now. NVMe configuration, no NVMe drive, but if we did have one, all of the settings for that would be here. SATA and RSD configuration, this is all of your SATA ports. You can see that we, again, we have our Samsung drive installed here. We can enable or disable all the ports, set them up as hot plugs, all of that stuff you can do right here. Into, and then this is our ethernet controller. We can see all the information on the ethernet controller. Again, it is not connected, so it says disconnected right there. Oops keep on hitting the wrong button. And then we go to miscellaneous. So this is our RGB control. There is a little bit of RGB on this board on the rear IO cover, LEDs uh, in system power on state. So if you wanna completely disable the RGBs without having to install their software, you just turn this from on to off. It is set by on to on by default. So if you want your RGBs off, you just set this to off. LEDs in sleep hibernation or soft off states. So again, if you turn off your system and you still want the RGBs to light up, you can actually turn this from off to on and your RGBs will still be on as long as there's power connected to your system. So some people like that, you can set that up if you want. Um, TPM, we don't have a TPM device, but all of your TPM settings would be right here as well. Let's go back and then PC, PC health status that will give you a live view of all of your voltages. So again, if you wanna check something, you can see it right here. System info is the next tab. This just gives you the basic information that we kind of saw on the first, uh, or on the easy mode, information on the board, the BIOS version, uh, BIOS date. BIOS date is always good to see because you wanna make sure you're, you're running the latest BIOS, so you kind of check the date there. Um, you can see your plug-in devices info. Again, that is what we saw earlier. Um, here it's just a list. And then Q flash again, we saw that, that allows you to flash your BIOS. So that's right here. Under boot, this is all of your boot configuration and boot option priorities. Again, we just have our one drive, so not much to do here. Um, oops, I keep on hitting the wrong buttons on my keyboard here. All right, we also have, what's weird in this, we have our mouse speed uh, in here, which is set to 1X. 
Um, I've never seen that in the BIOS. Maybe that's why this seems a lot smoother, like my mouse is moving much smoother than the other Z590 BIOS that I checked out from Gigabyte. So that's a plus for me. Um, and then we can set passwords and all of that in Secure Boots right here. Finally, we have Save and Exit. This allows you to load your optimized defaults. Um, there is boot over right here, although I don't have a flash drive installed, but if I did, we could see uh, in, you know, settings for boot override, which allows you to basically boot from a flash drive. And then once it restarts, like if you're installing Windows, it will go to your no normal boot priorities right there. So that is basically it. Also, if you change the setting and um, we save here, like we can see our last modified changes right here. Um, so if you're like, oh, what, what did I change this time? Right before you save, you can go ahead and see everything. Let's go back to the easy mode. Um, but yeah, guys, this is the BIOS. I mean, it is very easy to navigate. I didn't find any problems finding any of the settings here in the BIOS. I definitely do like the white. It's, it's, it's definitely a nice change. And as I said, it's this BIOS just seems a little bit more snappy than the BIOS uh, that I checked out on the Z590 Aorus Master, although they're pretty much the same BIOS with different skins, but I do like that my mouse moves around a lot easier. So if you guys have any questions about this BIOS or a Gigabyte Z590 BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below, and we'll see you guys in the next video.